Well, welcome everybody. We are having the Global Grants training slash information exchange for Rotary District 5230. So thank you all for tuning in tonight. And I will try to get you done in time for dinner around 7.30, maybe earlier. So we got a poll question up here. Have you applied for a Rotary Global Grant before? And I'm guessing that people who are on the phone cannot. Oh, okay, Janet, very nice. Is it okay, thank you for responding via the chat room. John says yes, okay. So uh, 13 out of 14 people voting, two are yeses. And that is Doug Brown and is it John? I think so, John raised his hand. And 11 are no's. So this is good because uh, that means that uh, you're in the right place. So, oh, and I see somebody in the chat room is saying, <laughs> oh, Janet says, no, I have not applied. Okay, I think we've got one more poll and then we will go to introductions. Okay. <laughs> poll number two. Oh. Okay, go to next poll. All right. Where do you want to do a Rotary Global Grant Project? The choices are Latin America, Europe, Africa, Middle East, Asia, United States. I'm or sure I left someplace all, up. All of the above. Uh, how about don't know? You can, choose, you can do multiple choice. Can you do don't know? Oh, I knew I forgot a choice. Okay, I will keep don't know in the back pocket. Because <laughs> I don't know. Okay, that's all right. I'm just learning. Great. Oh, and we have PDG Joe. Okay, wonderful. All right, nine out of 15, 10 out of 15. This is good. Hey, Juan, good to see you. Hey, thanks. Like oh. I hope we get to see your cat sometime. We've heard so much about her. <laughs> you don't want to see my cat. You'll hear my cat before you see my cat. Okay, 12 out of 15 people. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna, uh, what is it? All, all those wanting to vote, vote. All those wanting to vote, vote. Okay, we'll end the poll. All right, the poll results are. Oh, 50% want to do a, a project in Africa, 50% in the U.S., 33% in Latin America, 7% in the Middle East, 17%. I put that in for you guys because I, I knew that in, uh, uh, and nobody in Europe. Okay. Oh, and then maybe in Asia. Okay. And some people said they don't know. So wonderful. All right. Okay. Well, I would just um, like to open it up for introductions and I will go around the Hollywood squares and ask for everybody to introduce themselves. So uh, Doug Brown, tell us about yourself and a few minutes about your global grant experience or interests. Um, I'm currently towards the end stage of my, and I say my, my club and other allied clubs, but uh, our second uh, global grant in Africa, clean water, both times. Um, however, I've been involved in another three or four global grants where I wasn't the author. And Doug, which club are you with? Uh, this is Corral de Tierra in Salinas. Okay. All right, Nick. Hi, I'm Nick Grimm. I'm with North Fresno Rotary. Um, this is my first time doing global grants. Um, I was just asked by my club to attend because I've had uh, past years of working in the nonprofit field and fundraising. I've done several grants myself. So they've uh, asked me to uh, kind of, since I'm a little bit of the young pup of the club to uh, come and learn it um, since I'll be around for a while. Okay, and uh, do you have some club members here on the call with you? I think, uh, yes, uh, uh, Aaron, Aaron's from our club and he's, uh, he's actually our director for uh, for international services next year. All right, fantastic. So Aram, would you like to give us your perspective? Well, um, I'm the same with Nick. I've never done grants before, but we do have a project that we're working with uh, Puri, who's going to be uh, junior for the and her grant is to South Africa, working with a, uh, I believe it's a, uh, like a school or orphanage type of a deal 
Uh, she was supposed to be on the call today. I don't know. She might still come in. Okay, great. I'll keep an eye out. I was expecting Hori to show up too. Wonderful. Okay, Carolyn, tell us about yourself and your interest in global grants. Uh oh, there you go. I'm muted. You're muted. There I'm you go. Okay now. You're good now. It's weird because the box says I'm muted. Um, I'm from. Uh, Monterey Pacific Rotary, and we are currently involved with three other clubs doing grants. And Debbie, we're with your club on your grant, and Doug, we're with you on your grant, and then also with Ilge from the Cannery Row Club on um, Syria, the Syria pro uh, Project Refugee Educational Project. So we've got three that we're participating in right now. Um, I don't know about next year what we'll be doing, you know, if anything, with any new global grants until we get these three wrapped up. Sure. Well, that's wonderful. Thank you for your support. And um, it's, uh, it's a really, really critical part um, participating in all of them. So um, later on, I think we'll ask people to give an update on their, on their global grants that are in project pro progress. So Juan, you're also with uh, Monterey Pacific as well, right? That's right. Hello. I can't remember, I gave you a hard time last time. Future President Juan Calzada. <laughs> <laughs> family, so, man, family man and a lawyer, so I'm trying to balance all these things. Oh, forever. great. And what's your interest in, uh, in global grants? You know, um, this is topical. Um, you, the very reason, besides Carolyn Harris, wherever she is in this celebrity box thing, um, <laughs> uh, Carolyn Harris was the, the big motivation to join Rotary, and second of all, maybe even preceding Carolyn, was the fact that my wife's family, her parents in Baja, California, are both 40 or veteran Rotarians. And oh. so I, I was curious about it and I started speaking with them when we go down for Christmas and um, I, it caught my fascination. So now my hope is we're wrapping up, as you know, a, a grant in, uh, a global grant in Haiti. Yeah. And hopefully once that's seeded and then the other projects that Carolyn has mentioned are kind of stabilized, I'd like to, uh, do a project in Baja, California in the past. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Great, wonderful. Okay, Mark, tell us about yourself and yeah, your interesting club grants. I'm Mark Rancolas. I'm with the Carmel by the Sea Club, and I'm relatively new. I've been a member for a little less than a year, and prior to that, I actually joined Rotary when I was living in Mexico. I lived in Mexico uh, for a few years before I moved to Carmel and I joined a rotary club there that was um, it was fairly small only about 24 members they were all uh, none of them spoke Spanish they were all gringos that lived there in in uh, San Miguel de Allende the city of San Miguel de Allende but uh, we had our club even though we we're small we did several really high impact projects in the local community uh, clean water clean mm -hmm. and so forth and all of those projects were global grant projects. Um, I was not personally the author of any one of them. I worked closely in support of them. And, and uh, since I, I left Mexico and moved here, um, my club has supported one of the global grants that uh, um, San Miguel de Ende has been involved in, which is uh, dry compost toilets for families out in the country that, that have no toilets. They just use the local landscape. So uh, it's, it's a big project and uh, our district fortunately has already signed off and authorized the grant. Uh, so it's, it's gone into its final approval st stages back in uh, the foundation in Chicago. And, and we look forward to that, that work starting real soon. Great, wonderful. Okay, and we'll... Uh... Yeah, that's that sounds that's fantastic. I'm glad you got if that. I, in. If I can ask a question, um, per, me personally, I would would hope to author a global grant here in our district, somewhere in our district. I mean, clearly there's plenty of need overseas, dire need, but there are some needs in our district, and, and my goal is is to author one here in our district at some point in time. Um, I've heard that we did a global grant in our district. I, I think it was Porterville, a clean water grant. Do you, does anybody know anything about that? 
So um, I can I can jump ahead and talk a little bit about that now if you want me to. Um, uh, we're sort of in the introduction phase, but yes, we have done a couple of global grants. The Porterville grant was a little bit before my time, but that was um, assisting with installation, I believe, of uh, fire hydrants and some connections required to bring water into community in Porterville. Um, my club also uh, worked with the Corral de Tierra Club on and several other clubs to um, do a um, uh, help uh, construct bathrooms and showers for a uh, homeless health services facility in Salinas. And so I'll talk a little bit about the mechanics of how you do a grant in, in the U.S. Thank you. Um, Thank you for that. There was, all, John, there was also your... a third global grant in our district not too long ago um, in Salinas where the uh, Closter Park was renovated to basically get it back as a community center rather than a gang center. Yeah, right. I don't That's think we had ended up with global grant money for that one though. That kind of it was going to, but no, it felt it was good. global. Yeah. Hmm. Um, John, do you want to finish introducing yourself? Mm -hmm. Which club are you with? What's your background in global grants? Me. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. <laughs> Interestingly enough, John, you are the only John on the call. Yes. Okay. You're right. That's unusual, <laughs> isn't it? Uh, my name is John Hatz. I'm with the Pacific Grove Rotary Club. I've been in Rotary uh, 25 years and been involved with quite a few uh, global grants. Um, I did initiate one some years ago that um, was actually not approved, but I've um, been involved with many. And, and this past year, um, our PG Rotary Club has been involved with three grants, the uh, Syrian refugee uh, grant where we supported that with um, Bill Gay at the Cannery Row Club. And the um, we've been a supporter now for a while of the uh, uh, Shirley Grace uh, um, Mattel, Mattel. Uh, Kenyan grant, which I, I gather is still in the approval process. And uh, the third is a uh, uh, African, also Ugandan grant from District 5190, my old district um, in, in the Bwindi Forest um, in southwestern Uganda. It's a uh, uh, nursing school that's been established by Rotary some years ago um, by a doctor from Nevada City. Um, he and his wife first um, started a hospital and now a nursing school in more recent years. There's been several major grants um, that they've initiated. And uh, so anyway, that's my experience. And uh, Fantastic. All right, Jeff, tell us about yourself and your interest in global grants. Jeff Garza. Uh oh, Jeff, we see your mouth moving, but we don't, we can't hear you. It doesn't appear that you're muted, though. That's very weird. Hmm. Do you not have a microphone with your computer, Jeff? Yeah, you might need to dial in with your audio on your phone uh, on a separate line. So while you practice doing that, I'm gonna go to the next person and uh, give me a thumbs up when, when you think you've got it, okay? Okay, uh, let's see. Um, let's start, uh, let's check in with Tim Vinoli. Oh, I'm from the Solid Ed uh, Rotary Club. Um, oh, I actually, fantastic. I had this on my calendar for a District grant training. So I thought this was a district grant training, but, but I'm happy to stay on the call for the, the global grant and learn more about Okay, it. it's up to you, uh, uh, Tim. So that's wonderful and glad to have somebody here from Soledad. Um, and, and we hope to blow your mind and open your world. Thank you. <laughs> All right, wonderful. Uh, okay, Anna Pine from Fresno. Hi. Um... I'm just here to try to keep up with Shirley Grace on her global grant. <laughs> I think she's got, what, four or five outstanding out in the process right now, and she's working on another one for the year. So, 
Yeah, she's got the Mattel grant that is uh, pending. The other two or three have already been approved or are in process. And the next one, um, yeah, so uh, I can cover those when we do our grant summary later, or you can, and we'll tag team a little bit. I think you probably can keep up with her faster than I, so. <laughs> I'm not gonna go that far. <laughs> Thanks so much, Anna. All right, Monta Potter. And, and you're with the, well, we can tell you with the Rotary Club of Fresno, Anna, because you, you have smartly put that in your photo. Monta Potter. Here we go. Uh, hi, everyone, I'm Monta Potter. I'm uh, Monterey Peninsula uh, Sunrise Rotary Club. I've been in Rotary for 30 years, but in four clubs. This is the first time I've been president. And so I have a lot to learn. I haven't really been involved with global grants. So I'm really impressed with what everybody's doing and look forward to hearing more. Thanks. Well, fantastic. And uh, yeah, you, you kept trying to leave the club before they would appoint you president, but the last club grabbed you and, and had you do it, huh? Good I'm job. Let that, let that be a lesson to you all. Okay. Uh, Janet Bellardo. Um, yes. Can you hear me? We can. Hi. Um, I'm with Monterey Pacific um, with Carolyn and Juan. And um, I'm going to be the president-elect. So I just want to get to know everything, every aspect of what that means. And um, so I'm excited to hear what uh, more about the global grants. I know that I've, I've been, I were part of those three global grants and then um, we've been fortunate to have uh, the speakers come and, and talk about what's going on in those grants. So I'm excited to hear more. Thank you. Well, fantastic and congratulations, almost congratulations. Thank you. All right, Karen's iPad. Here, here I am. I'm here. So I'm pres president elect. I'm proud to say that Anna Pine is our, our club uh, secretary. So I'm following Anna. So as she said, uh, Shirley Grace has been our superhero in, um, in uh, global grants. And so we want to be prepared. I'm hoping that there'll be more people interested in pursuing global grants. We do a lot of international outreach with uh, solar cookers and water purification and wheelchairs and doctors in Guatemala. We do a lot of international um, uh, support. So I'm thinking that grants might be a growing concern for some of our younger members and I'm hoping we can encourage them. Thank you. Wonderful, Karen. What's, uh, what's your last name, Karen? Musson, M-U-S-S-O-N. Well, that's a big club you got to manage there. And so kudos to you for taking that on. And uh, I'm sure this means you're a mucky muck in the Fresno community as well. So great. I just want to make clear that I have a five-year contract with Anna. She's going to be there right beside me. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you. Good for you. That's fantastic. Okay. And I see someone has joined us, the 559-289-9074. Who is that? Oh, that's Jeff Garza. But hey, you, Jeff. All right. Good job. Tell us about yourself. Can you hear me? Global grants. We can hear you. Perfect. Okay. Good. Um, I'm with uh, Fig Garden Rotary in Fresno. Oh. I'm the uh, president elect and I moved up a year, so I didn't get to go to pets. Um, so, but I minimal involvement with global grants. Um, I was in the San Luis Obispo Club for oh. about five years and we joined with another club uh, as far as contributing money uh, towards a global grant, but we weren't in charge of any of the paperwork. At that time, it was very, very complicated um, to apply for a global grant, so. <laughs> kind of complicated, but it has to do with a lot of different things, not just being difficult. So yeah, it's a, it's a whole, so we'll, just, we'll try to get into that. So, so yeah, I, well, wonderful. Well, welcome, Jeff, and uh, yeah, welcome to the district. And Jeff, your, uh, your Fig Garden Club is a uh, partner in the Corral de Tierra Salinas uh, Africa Clean Water Project currently. Oh, I didn't know that. Yep. Yeah, wonderful. Your, do you know who the contact person is in our club? Doug. Oh. <laughs> I, 
Uh, Probably the DG. No, I, that's who I first contacted, Mike Andrich. But um, okay, well, I'll ask Mike. Yeah, that sounds great. All right, Brenda from my own Selena Steinbeck Rotary Club. I've not been ignoring you. All right, <laughs> tell us about yourself and why you're interested in global mm -hmm. grants. Okay, as Debbie says, I belong to. Uh, I'm with the Steinbeck Rotary Club. And um, when I started, the club gave me the opportunity to be the international chairperson. And I'm, I'm really enjoying to do that. And, um, and at the best that I have as a mentor, you, Debbie. <laughs> so we're, do <laughs> we're doing a water project right now in my country, El Salvador, San Salvador. And we're trying to get uh, more than 5,000 people over there in a little town, uh, water, clean water. And I'm really proud of that. And I, I want to learn more. Fantastic. And Brenda's a real go-getter. And she went out and she found a Rotary Club and she found a project. And we're so excited to move forward on that. And then last, but, uh, but actually the, the, the unleashed, our past district governor and incoming district foundation chair, Joe Grebmeyer. Joe. Hello, everyone. Uh, I've been involved in several grants from the King City and the district area over the years. Uh, my real background was in grant writing for the government. But my rotary position is I raise money for the grants. So <laughs> I'm here to support you. But... Uh, we're putting together our foundation committee and uh, my background is fundraising. And so along with supporting the grants program, stewardship, Paul Harris, uh, I will be working on a three year plan to increase our donations to the Rotary Foundation, which increases our ability to write grants. So, so fantastic. I love working with Joe because he's all about raising money and I'm all about spending money. And so we get along so great because I'm not as good as raising money as he is because hardly anybody is. So it's fantastic. All right. Has everybody had a chance to speak just to make sure I got everybody? All right. Fantastic. Well, let's get into some of the nuts and bolts here then. So um, what I am going to talk about is... Uh, what some of the nuts and bolts are of uh, doing a Rotary Global Grant, what some of the issues and pitfalls are, and then in the end, we'll kind of conclude and talk a little bit more, uh, get your questions, and, and see if some of, some of you that have some active grants um, need uh, any input or assistance from the group. Does that sound good? Okay, so I'm going to share my screen. Oh, look at that. Wow. I'm going to share my screen with everybody. And uh, hmm, how do I do that? Okay, basic advanced portion of screen uh, content. Okay, let's let's can't, let's try something else. Uh, okay, what I really want to do is go through the global grant. What I was hoping to do is go through the global grant checklist and then go into the. Uh, so let's just minimize my my screen for Zoom. Okay, that's going to do the exact opposite. Uh, mm -hmm. Exit full screen. Okay. What I'd like to do is walk us a little bit through the application here, um, because I think uh, I think that'll be the most useful. Um, so, but I also want to talk about the global grant policies um, as well. So, um, I'm going to just I don't see it here. It disappeared. Um, so, give me just a second while I open it up. So, um, okay, so global grant checklist. All right, that's the best thing to start with. Okay. Am I sharing my screen okay? Yep, says yeah. I am, okay. All right, so what I would like to do is to, to show you the global grant checklist and walk through this a little bit, okay? Why is there this weird thing in front of it? Mm -mm -mm. Okay, can you guys see everything on my screen or can you just see the global grant checklist? 
cannot see the global grant checklist. I see your okay. folders on the left. Mm, okay, that's bad. Uh, screen sharing. Let's try this one more time. Okay. Talk before though. Okay. Screen share portion screen. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Basic. Oh, this one's better. Okay. There we go. Okay. Yes. Okay. Now, of course, you can't see it because it's way too small. Okay, so I have a ready, set, go. So if we're gonna start with the A, B, C's, your club needs to do the same thing it needs to do for a district grant, which is to adopt a club MOU and financial plan. As far as I know, all of your clubs have done that. It's part of the district grant application. So if you're applying for a district grant, you're set. If I don't, like, let's say 80% of the clubs apply for district grants. So if your club is not applying for a district grant, the only one I can think of on this call that falls in that category is Soledad. Um, then you'll want to contact us if you're going to initiate one of these grants so that I can make sure you sign it. That, of course, is the number two thing, which is when you're getting ready to do a global grant, contact me and say, hey, we'd like to do this, da 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 And what I can do is point, just make sure that what you're talking about is reasonable and fundable. One of the pitfalls that people run into is, A, um, they want to build a building. And with some minor exceptions, like school buildings, they run into some problems. Okay, I have to go tell my husband not to vacuum right now. Hold on just a second. Babes. Babes. Sorry. Is that too low? <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> okay. Um, for instance, so if you want to build a building, there are some restrictions on that. And so I want to make sure that, um, that you uh, uh, avoid that. And there's also a lot of other different things. Um, Recently, for instance, I was contacted by a group that really wanted to do an environmental project with education about not, um, uh, you know, not putting certain things into the ocean and all that. There's really not a good fit for that within the rotary areas of service. So your project needs to be in one of the six areas of, of um, focus areas, which is, you know, uh, water and sanitation, uh, disease um, prevention. I'm not going to get the names quite right. Um, uh, maternal and child health, um, peace and conflict resolution, uh, economic development, and one more volunteers. And the other one. And the other one. Thank you. Thank you, Doug. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you, said, you said water and sanitation, right? I did. Yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> okay. I usually forget peace and conflict, but, or, uh, the community development, but, um, mm -hmm. All right. Uh, is your club in good standing? So um, if you have a global grant, I, I used to think you had to actually absolutely have all of your final project reports in on your global grant and, uh, in order to be a club in good standing. But I've since discovered that you actually don't have to. And so really the main thing about being a club in good standing is have you paid all your rotary dues? So um, that hasn't been a big issue. Although if you've completed a grant, they do want you to have filed your final report. Um, Debbie, Debbie yes. on, that, on that point, you don't necessarily have to, if, if you have a previous global grant, you don't necessarily have to have your final in, but you cannot be overdue. So yes. if, if, you've, if you've applied for an extension, then you're good. But if you're yeah. overdue, then no, you can't do a new one. Yeah, thank you, Doug, for that clarification. Yeah. yeah. Debbie, can I ask you a question about that too? Um, sure. Those, la those two points, um, you know, being in good standing, uh, is, do you have the ability to go into DACDB and see whether or not that's the case for any club? It's rotary, it's actually grants.rotary.org is what you go into. And um, you'll be able to take a look and see um, when you go into grants dot rotary dot org it will show you what active grants your club is involved in uh and so you'll be able to see if there's any issues now well there isn't a box that says are you in good standing 
but it'll show you whether you have any overdue reports. And so that's um, one of the things that I can help you check. The issue I've run into more often than is your club in good standing is, is your partner Rotary Club in good standing? When, when we did our grant in uh, Honduras, um, we, were, we spent a long time waiting for them to file their final grant report for another grant because they couldn't qualify as being in good standing until they'd done that. And I was emailing their district governor. I mean, that was really obnoxious, but I had to do it because we were waiting, 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 you know? So, yeah. And so Debbie, I'll I don't, coordinate with you on that. Debbie, I don't know if it's an RI issue or a district issue, but in uh, the district in Africa, uh, the, our partner club there was not in good standing on the basis that they had not yet paid their uh, annual dues. Yeah, and I wouldn't be surprised. That sounds like a Rotary Foundation issue to me. Because, yeah. you know, bottom line is you got to pay your dues. Um, I, I mean, you know, because otherwise how can they, they can't give you new money if you haven't paid your dues. Exactly. Yeah, so, okay. Hey, and then, yes. Debbie, it's Nick from, sorry to interrupt. Uh, that oh, hi, grants Nick. No, go right ahead that grants.rotary.org um do you have to log in like you would for like DACDB or my rotary is or is it just you can is it you know kind of like a private portal where we need to use the same information as DACDB to log in log so it's into? not the same as DACDB I believe but it's the same as my rotary.org okay so whatever you use for that that's be the same yeah. username yeah. and password okay because it'll give you that same login play, uh, page as um, myrotary.org, but it's kind of a shortcut to get into the grants page. So I use it all the time, and then I'll be like, oh, how come you don't have me logged in already? But once you log in, it'll take you back to the grants page. So it's, it's really a nice shortcut. All right, perfect. Thank you. Great. Debbie, Joe, Joe Grebmeyer. Um, oh, hi, Joe. If you log into my rotary, I think it'll take you to all of it. But as far as qualification, we've had issues in the past that some districts have been disqualified. Oh. Generally, you check on that. But because of financial reporting issues, the entire district was disqualified, and you couldn't partner up with any club in that district. And Joe, that's in your and my bailiwick. So um, in, in fact, in the past, um, one time they had me uh, sign up for it and Ann said, oh, I'll handle that. So um, yeah, we just have to make sure that um, the district files, it's a, it's a paperwork thing, really. Um, I mean, the district pays its bills. So, um, so yeah, that's something that we need to make sure that we've done uh, before the end of the fiscal year. The only time I ever had problems with it was one year when, um, I don't know. It was just timing. Well, we have a visitor here. Hello. Hello, little Nick. Late Nicklet. This is uh, one of my twins, Nolan. Hi, Nolan. Hi. Nice to meet Hi. you. All right. Your dad's doing good around the world. Isn't that exciting? <laughs> he's like, he just sees people on, on TV. So on the, on the screen. So he's just wants to see. Super cool. Okay, so you're ready. You got your rotary ID and login, and you're you're you've talked to me about it and such. So the first thing I'm going to ask you when I talk about this is how big is your is your project? And um, boy, the total budget has to be at least thirty thousand under the rotary requirements. I used to say the rule of thumb was thirty six thousand by the way that things are matched, but it's changing, and so. Um, uh, well, I'll, I'll talk about that in the, next, in the bullet after this one. Um, so the Rotary Foundation has to contribute a minimum of 15000 and the maximum project side is 200000 I, I have yet to do one that big, but challenge us. Um, then um, let's say you're like, like Brenda. She came to me and she said, I want to do a project in my home country. And I said, well, that's great. Um, what do you want to do? And she came up with a bunch of ideas. And I said, well, now find a Rotary Club that will partner with you. And so um, the key to that is, can you find a club that's done a global grant in the past? Or if they haven't, you know, are, are they educatable, educatable and are they in good standing? And Rotary International really in the past is who I've had to reach out to and say, are they in good standing? And so that's why I always like to talk to people before they get on this. Debbie? Yes. That $30,000 minimum, is that over a certain number of years? 
it's over the project. So some projects take, most projects only take a few months, although they t some of them take forever, but it mostly has to do with grant reporting. So let's say that your, um, your project is gonna take, you know, a year and a half to install everything. I mean, it's just a project budget, the whole project, no matter how long it takes. The thing about your project that you've been working on in, in, in Mexico, it's been actually a couple different global grants. Yes. All of which have been over a, a you know, certain amount of time. Yes. So it's just uh, the project budget, and then it might take a little bit of time for it to, to take place. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Okay, great. Okay, so you're, let's say your project is big enough and you've got a partner club. So then it's like, what's the nut I need to crack? How much do I need to raise? So if you've got a project that's pending for this year, and frankly, I'm counting pretty much the projects that are in draft right now, um, then you have a, the old matching requirements. But I just got an email, and so did anybody who's project managers, which is Doug, I think, on this call, um, that uh, Rotary International is no longer matching club funds. Oh, that is a huge, huge downside. So they will only now match district designated funds 100%. So the way we've set it up in our district, and we might have to reevaluate this, is that the clubs raise a certain amount of money, the district will match what the clubs have raised, and then Rotary will, the World Fund will match 100% of the district funds, district designated funds, DDF, and they will match 50% of what the clubs have raised. And so that means that if my club puts in $500, then the district's policy has been to put in $500. And then Rotary International puts in another $500 plus $250. And so next thing you know, my $500 has multiplied into $1,750 if I did my math right. Well, now that will only multiply into $1,500. So um, there is a Rotary Global Grants calculator that I put the link on, and I will send this all to everybody, um, either during the meeting or, or at the end, so that you'll have all these links. So if you're getting ready to submit a grant, or you've got a grant that's in draft, you wanna get it in now. So I'm glad to hear that Doug's grant is submitted. That means that the Matau grant needs to be submitted. That means that our, our um, El Salvador grant needs to be submitted. Um, and that means that the, the San Miguel grant is already submitted and authorized. So you're good on that one. Um, the Syrian refugee grant, um, Ilge has been having problems with the host Rotary Club and she was gonna perhaps cancel and resubmit. I don't know if she's going to do that now because her match, she will have to start raising money all again. And then Shirley Grace's breast cancer screening in, in India, I, I don't know. So um, it's kind of thrown a whole wrench in it. Rotary International sent us this email that said, well, we spent so much on COVID-19. Now we're going to have to change our match. Abby, you went silent. I can't hear yeah, you. Can't hear you see it now there we go mm -hmm. so if if every um if every district were able to raise money like joe grebmeyer can then we might be okay um but and we might and, and the fact that um we're a good we do a good job of raising money um might mean that we can change our district matching funds program but for now um we'll we won't be changing it i don't think for next year we'll 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 have to see how it goes. And so that was, we just got notice of this last week. Uh, Debbie, it's, it's in the writing here, but I, I just wanted to stress it. You were saying that people that are planning their grants need to get them in. July 1st is the deadline. So it's gotta be in before July 1st or the new funding uh, yeah. will supply. So those of you from North Fresno, you might need to take a look at this. I don't know if you can do it that fast. I'm not sure you can. Because you also, because we're working really hard on our El Salvador grant, and we'll talk a little bit about that later. We're still short about four thousand dollars locally, um, and so um, you know we'll get it in, but you know we're going to have to really work work it hard. So. Debbie, uh, side note: 
our focus is on uh, raising money for the Rotary Foundation through the district. But we will also support any club fundraiser. It's okay. not necessarily for the foundation, but it's for the club. So in uh, in the future, if you have any fundraising or you want to think of a fundraising or you need help with fundraising, whether it's for the, the Rotary Foundation or just your club, please contact me. Wow. We will. We will. <laughs> okay. Fantastic. That is great news. Thank you, Joe. That's wonderful. All right. We're here to support. Both okay. The Writing the note, the talk to Joe, because it's a tough fundraising year this year. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. You know, but I got to tell you, if you haven't lost your job, you are saving money because you are not going out to eat and you are not traveling anymore. And, you know, now if you're out of work, it's a different matter. But, yeah. So, Deb Debbie, if I, if I can also chime in, um, I, I don't know if the other folks in the other clubs know that um, my club, Carmel by the Sea, years ago was very lucky. One of our members was a gentleman who wrote jingles for commercials. And apparently oh, oh he did God. really well. And when he passed away, he left us, he left our club $6 million. We give away wow. the that on an annual basis. And um, up until I joined, we were only uh, granting the interest to uh, local um, requests, but uh, we are now open to global grant requests. So if a club has a project and they're short of funding and looking for funding, you know, please come to us, let me know. I'm on our awards and grants committee and I can bring it to our committee. And, um, you know, possibly we can, we can provide some funding for you that way. Fantastic, Mark. And I'm, I'm not gonna miss the opportunity to just say to you that we haven't made our official request because you wanted to make sure our grant was in, but our grant is in now. And so Brenda and I will wanna follow up with you. And if you can put in a little more than we originally discussed, that would be fantastic. Yeah, please come back with the amount you need. Chat with you offline. Yeah, all right. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Mark. Wow. Thank all you. All right. See, this webinar is worth it already, you guys. <laughs> okay. So moving through the checklist here then. Um, okay. So um, the Rotary Foundation Global Grants Coordinator. I have put Cecilia Walter in here. She is really the Global Grants Coordinator for... U.S. projects in our district, but she has been my go-to person. She can help you find a Rotary Partner Club in good standing if you don't have a contact, and she can also point us towards the right Rotary person. So what I'll make a note to do, there are Rotary contacts for all the districts. I mean, you know how many districts there are. There's a, you know, 10,000 districts, whatever. Um, I will go ahead and include that in, in the resource that I send off to you. Um, but it's important to check in with your Rotary Grant Advisor for your area um, because they will help you out as well. And in the end, you want them to review your grants uh, in draft stage so that they don't review it when you think you're all ready to go uh, and you're not. And they'd say, no, you're not. Okay, and then uh, I sent you all the, uh, whoops, the guide to Rotary Guide to Global Grants. We're going to review the Global Grant application and the Rotary Grants calculator, which is going to change. Okay. So as we discussed earlier, which one did I forget? Ugh. Okay, which one did I forget? Let's just take Actually, a look. Actually, I looked at it. You got them all in. Uh-uh. I forgot literacy. Ugh. Ugh. Steinbeck Rotary Club forgot literacy. You guys are going to hate me. Peace and conflict, disease prevention and treatment, water and sanitation, and maternal child health, basic education and literacy. Very common, very popular. Okay, so it has to fit into one of these. Uh, so far, environmental benefits have not been added. Uh, sometimes you can work that into water and sanitation, but not always. Debbie, so, again, may, the uh, Board of Trustees is discussing that right now. We may oh, see good. it next year, early next year, as a additional area of focus or being written into supporting the other areas. But the foundation uh, trustees have taken that up as an issue and they're trying, they're supporting it, but they're trying to figure out how to work it into 
the foundation guidelines. Wow. Okay. My, my suggestion would be that it will give the Rotary staff more guidance, more support for saying it's eligible if you put it in a, a separate category. Because the thing I ran into was, yeah, they've got this new guidance on it, but it just doesn't quite fit into one of the categories. We were trying to do a project in um, Baja, California, Monterey uh, Cannery Row, um, where they were trying to do a water, um, well, a water pollution education thing. And I couldn't really tie it to water supply. And it sounded like a really great program, you know, and avoiding water pollution of our oceans. So, and yeah. Yeah. One of my goals for this next year is I'm working on a newsletter for the, the district newsletter on district foundation issues and to relay any updates from the Rotary Board of Trustees so that you all find out as soon as possible of what changes are happening in the Rotary Foundation. Great, fantastic. Okay, so you've done all the boring stuff now. You've done the coordination, you've talked to me to make sure your idea is good. All right, what do you need to do to get all the details? Visit the project site ahead of time. I gotta say that, um, you know, we haven't done that yet, have we, Brenda? Nope. <laughs> if you can't visit the project site ahead of time, make sure your host Rotary Club does it. Um, with Zoom available now, it's so exciting. I just love the fact that we can talk with people in, you know, El Salvador and touch base. We can talk with people in the city. So maybe I should modify this a little bit, but either you or the host Rotary Club should visit the project site ahead of time. So I'll, I'll modify that. Um, because somebody needs to go and do this initial assessment and establish relationships, okay? Um, because when you come to the Rotary grant application, it's gonna ask you, what did you do to conduct your sustainability analysis? The heart of this whole question is, are you doing a project that the community wants, that the community supports, that they are going to make sure is used? The last thing Rotary, Rotary wants to do is spend you and I's hard-earned Paul Harris Fellowship monies on a project that you come back three years from now and isn't being used, okay? So that's what the sustainability analysis is all about. Now, I will grant you that certain hurdles fall up along the way. I mean, the toilets and the showers and the health services center we did in Salinas, they went through a, a crisis of who's gonna run this center but they were so supported by the community that the place didn't, didn't sit vacant for very long, maybe a few weeks, and then the city came in and they brought in a new nonprofit and they started running it. Is that the kind of project that's in your community? Um, do you have a way to sustain these compost toilets? They're kind of self-sustaining. Um, are they gonna use them or are you just gonna have goats walking in them? <laughs> so, um, this is, this is really the, the uh, discussion you need to have with the community. Okay, and when you first, oh, go ahead. Was there a question? Yeah, there, there's a real issue with that because in the past, Rotarians have come up with really great ideas, approached communities who were too polite to say, no, we don't need that. This is yeah. what we need. And it's getting back to the best solution is found at the location and talking to the people with what is it you need? Maybe it's not water, maybe it's sanitation, maybe it's education. But we found several projects failed quite quickly because we hadn't planned for sustainability and it was something that they really didn't want. Yeah, so that's where we want to avoid. All right, so You've done your sustainability anal analysis. You've got your project. Um, I think I'm, I'm uh, well, I'll, I'll run through this part real quickly. And then if we have time, I want to go through the application a little bit. So um, before you can even do step one in the global grant application, you have to determine who's the primary and, sec and secondary contact for both your club and the international club. Now, if it's a grant in the US, your club will be the international club. 
If it's, or I'm sorry, your club will be the host club. If it's a grant outside of the US, your club will be the international club. Most of the grants are in other countries, but some of the grants are in the US. And just to talk a little bit about that, the key for a grant in the US is that you need 30% of the money from outside of the country. How do you get to that? You have partnerships with another district or club in which you've helped their grant. Um, Rotarians around the world tend to be wealthier, but there are certain countries where it's easier to get their participation in the US. Um, India's is a country that tends to have more money. Um, it's, you know, income distribution that people who are Rotarians tend to have money. Um, that's where we've been able to actually get Rotary contributions to a U.S. project. Uh, another area, let's say Australia, let's say Europe. Now, a lot of these countries, they're not necessarily motivated to do a project in the U.S., but if you do a global grant in their country, they're going to be more motivated to do a global grant in your country. Or let's say you go to the Rotary International Convention and you have some relationships. Or let's say you're a DG or a PDG and you've met people in other countries that have money. So you can convey the fact that, hey, you know, the Salinas Valley area has some of the most dire situations, which with regards to farm workers or water or homelessness. And so that relationship that you've gotten or that our friends, uh, you know, PDGs or whatever have gotten um, allows us to develop the relationship for a project in the US. So if you have a project in the US, um, I will definitely talk to you about uh, what are some of the options that we have in terms of getting investment from outside of the country. But the key is you need 30% in order to make it work. Any questions on that? I know that uh, one of you have a specific interest in US project. Debbie, was there a, an exception to that currently? for a global grant on COVID? There was, and I think they're done with the COVID. We tried to think of one, but it was a really short turnaround time. Probably would have worked better if we'd had something in the pipeline already. Um, and our area, you know, not our district, not as direly affected by COVID as let's say down South. So, yeah. I, I got to give you a lot of credit, Debbie, because the last since the uh, well, the last four or five years on grant writing, it's been a moving target on what the rules are this year. Yeah, yeah, and uh, that's why we do the training. By the way, uh, Debbie, is I, with respect to getting international partners, uh, you were saying, well, yeah, you get international part, if you're doing a, a project in the US, you get international partners, and we're, in, in Corral de Tierra, our project in Africa, a um, little anecdote on my way back from our first project in Africa, in the airport, I met a, a Rotarian. He had the rotary, rotary jacket on. We got to talking. He had gone over there just for a safari, but he got interested in our project. He was from Canada, eh? And uh, so he said, well, if you guys ever do another one, he said, give me a call. And I did, and they are part of our African project. So sometimes your relationships with people from other countries can assist you in your fundraising for yet a, yet a different country project. So true. And past district governor Lee Blankenship in our Steinbeck club had a relationship with um, another uh, past district governor uh, in Australia. And they partnered with us on our, um, our bathrooms and shower project in Salinas. And, um, and in fact, um, you know, she's somebody I stay with, in touch with on F Facebook. She asked, would we participate in a Columbia water grant? She works with the water um, uh, foundation. And um, so, yeah, this is how these partnerships get started. This is why I encourage people to go to the Rotary International Convention. And now we will start crying because that was supposed to be starting this past, this coming week. So. 
Debbie, yeah. Debbie, Debbie, can I ask a question just to clarify that 30% uh, requirement? Uh, so let's say you're, you've got a project in, in our district a global, and you're looking for a global grant, it's for $30,000. Um, so you've got to get 10,000 of that from uh, overseas. And let's say there's a club in Africa that says, well, we want to donate 5,000 and their district matches with another 5,000. Is so that's that's what you would need. In other words, not the the Rotary Foundation match of the district funds included. Um, well, I uh, in concept, I think you have the right idea. I always like to go to the spreadsheet because uh, sometimes it works out slightly differently, and especially with the new match requirements. But essentially, yes, essentially that is that is the case. Now, yeah, yeah. Okay. So I think, I think you've got the right concept. And, and one of the things um, that we've done, just to let you all know, is that we've got a new global grants uh, sharing team that Mark really started up. And, um, and we'll meet again um, uh, sometime uh, either in the next month or, or later this month. Um, but there is such a strong interest, as you saw, 50% of the people on the poll want to do a, a global grant in, in our district that I think it'd be worthwhile for us to work together on how can we make that happen. Um, the last global grant in this district was the one in Salinas, so maybe it's time to go to a different county. But um, I would love to see that happen. And um, uh, so be thinking about what might be some opportunities, because I can tell you, we do have a chit out there with a Rotary Club and district in India. Um, we were going to do a Monterey County Food Bank project that ended up not qualifying. And so, so yeah. Okay, um, let's see. So you, oops. Okay, let's see. Undo. Uh, oop. So uh, okay, so you want to start drafting your global grant. Get a global grant number. Um, so prepare monitoring plan. This is all things that you will walk through on the global grant application. Um, a couple of the things to watch out for, um, they will want you to sign a memorandum of understanding with cooperating agencies. So for instance, for our grant in um, El Salvador, we um, need to have an MOU with the city of Santa Tecla, which is going to be essentially operating the um, water supply system that our global grant is going to be installing. And they will be working with the local community group to um, uh, uh, collect the um, monthly fees from the households that they've all voted for and agreed to participate in. Um, but Brody wants to have this MOU spelled out. Um, in our past water project in Honduras, we did a, a cooperating organization MOU with the Engineers Without Borders who essentially designed and uh, helped the community and the Rotary Club build the project. So Rotary kind of feels like when in doubt, do an MOU. Um, the other thing, and I didn't put it on my checklist here, is that, um, in fact, I will, I will add that, is, um, is to, if there's some sort of training that needs to happen, um, then they will want you to submit that with your grant application. And what's crazy is that there's not really a place to do that, so you just kind of add it in, in wherever they let you add an, an attachment. And I can tell you for sure, um, one of the popular areas is clean water and they will even though it's not in the list of things to check off they will expect and require uh, uh hygiene and sanitation training as part of that yeah. project Okay, the next, oh, Jeff, you're getting fancy now. The next item in here, obtain partner club funding. And this is where I end up spending most of my time is coordinating with you all and other interested global grant participants to uh, make a commitment to, part, to uh, partner with the grant. A um, couple of things that I always like to note on this is um, number one, first, thank you everybody for, for your participation and, and, and the partnerships that go back and forth. You know, I help your grant, you help my grant. Um, want to recognize that for 
grants outside of the country, most people prefer to just give the money to the Rotary Foundation and get the Paul Harris credit for your club so that you can match Paul Harris contributions and not have to deal with international banking and all that kind of thing. And I totally support that. But what that means now is a few years ago, they charge a 5% surplus surcharge on that. So if you or your club is contributing $1,000, you got to pay another 50 bucks to the Rotary Foundation. Um, generally that's okay but if you're giving you know five thousand bucks you might not want to contribute five percent of that and so um you could then um wire the money directly to the host rotary club bank but you know it all depends on how the level of trust and all that kind of thing and maybe you just wanted to go through the rotary foundation so most clubs do contribute that do do that but um what I've done is I've developed a club commitment form that mem memorializes that so that a club knows that if you're contributing $1,000, you got a 50% $50 surcharge on it, a 5%. Um, because the last thing you want to do is come back to the club and say, oh, by the way, I need to collect that 5% on top of it. Um, the other thing is, you know, sometimes these grants take a long time. And so, um, again, I've developed this club commitment uh, form, um, which I'll send you a copy of, uh, because clubs forget. I can tell you, my club forgets. They're like, oh, yeah, I <laughs> contributed to that Mattel grant. <laughs> and so that way you have it in writing, no, 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 you said you contributed to it. Because it's sort of like the slate gets wiped clean, you lose a treasurer, you lose a secretary, all that kind of thing. And so, no, 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 I have this signed form. And so it's just a good idea to have that. Debbie? Yes, Doug, you're loud. Uh, there is a third option in terms of funding the project. Um, our first project in Tanzania, we knew that Tanzania was a country rife with uh, corruption and so forth. Um, and with the approval of RI, we handled the payment of the various vendors and contractors from here. So we didn't go through RI and pay the 5%, but we also didn't send the money to the club in Tanzania who are very novice at money management, uh, let alone the corruption in the country. So we managed the money, but it did. we did have to get RI uh, okay on that. How did that work, Doug? Because I know that they are doing that in, um, in Zimbabwe, the Salinas Club for the Mattel project, but like, like, how do you pay? Do you just use a credit card or how does that work? No, uh, we get an invoice and then we wire the money to the uh, vendor. Uh, wow. And our, when our partner has certified that um, everything is copacetic. Um, What's nice about that is that you have the invoice already. I mean, one of the key issues that we run into with people filing their final grant report is that, oh yeah, the invoices. I mean, I remember in, in uh, in Honduras, you know, we went to the Home Depot equivalent many, many times, and I'm like taking pictures of the invoices, then I realized this doesn't matter, I need all the invoices, and it just takes a long time to keep track of them all. Um, but that said, you know, you, you, it means your club's going to be a little more involved than you probably realized. So it sounds like Africa, though, that's standard operating procedure. That's the, the last... It, I understand it's, it's a fairly frequent uh, way of doing it. Yeah. Okay. So those of you that are doing projects in Africa. Debbie, to um, think about. Debbie I have an input on that too. Uh, this, uh, the uh, grant that we participated in um, in Africa, in uh, Uganda, uh, this year, past year, um, we, we sent the money to the Reno Rotary Club Foundation ahead of time. And uh, they must have, I guess, gotten approval, but uh, they, they held all of the funds um, there, so. It sounds like the way to avoid the, any corruption issues in Africa. Right. Okay, interesting. All right, so you've gotten all this information, you pulled it all together, you uh, pull, filled out the district grants application form. What, um, what I want to know is, okay, I've finished the grant application and it's going to come through. So you send me an email and I say, okay, great. Joe, this grant application is coming. 
Um, and, and actually, even ahead of that, you know, I want to know how much are you going to want to ask the district for? Essentially, what's your club club funding? Because that way I can get conceptual approval from the district governor, which next year is going to be Joy Anderson, and from uh, Joe Grebmeyer, the district foundation chair. And that way they can say, yeah, we have enough money in our account. We can do that. We support this project. And that way you haven't done all this work ahead of time and then you submit it and they're like, oh, no, we don't like that. And, um, you know, I never want to make, make them feel like they're just rubber stamping things. Um, our district is different than some in that we don't, we have a, a small enough amount of global grants that we are able to kind of consider them on a, a as they get submitted basis. If we ever got a whole bunch of people submitting them all the time, we might have to have a little more, you know, competitive process. But right now, the key issue, at least in the current fiscal year that we've had is, um, you know, has our budget. And so I, I will tell, you know, Rod Coburn and Mike Andrich, who the current district governor and district foundation chair, okay, I've been working with these people. Here's the conceptual idea. I think it makes sense. I ask for your conceptual approval of spending, you know, $10,000 to match the club contributions. And they will send me an email that says, yes, I approve, or I have some more questions about that. Um, and then when you submit your application, they'll get the formal approval and, and it'll just be automatic. Okay. Okay. So then you've got all your stuff together. You've gotten their conceptual approval. You submit your grant online. All right. So you think, oh, I'm so golden. I finally got this darn thing in. Let everybody know, the club president, your primary contact, me, um, uh, you know, our people are pretty good. Uh, the current district governor and district foundation chair are pretty good about approving it right away. But I also always send them a, this grant's been submitted. Please go online and check it. Now, they get an email as well from, the, from uh, Rotary Foundation. But I'll be darned if that district in, you know, wherever the heck it is, or, or that club or whatever, everything has to be confirmed. I'm sorry, all the DDF money that you get, all the district designated funds that they're contributing, they've got to sign off on it. Um, your partner Rotary Club, the president and the district governor and the district foundation chair has to sign off on it. So once you submit it, send your emails around and say, it's coming, be ready, approve. I mean, Half of the problem with district grants is meeting all the requirements. Well, okay, let's say one third. One third is raising the matching money. And the other third is just waiting for people to approve stuff. Oh my God, it just blows me away. So, all right. You finally got your, your global grant done. The host Rotary Club needs a separate bank account. It's useful if your club is getting money from other clubs that you maybe just get them to send the check to you. They can send the check to the Rotary Foundation, but have them send the check to you made out to the Rotary Foundation. You send them all at the same time. That way you know you got them all. Okay. Um, the host club then uh, will get all the money into their bank account. Okay. And uh, if you don't want the 5% surcharge and you get all the clubs to send you their money, then you could transmit it to the other club and then you don't pay the 5%. So that's kind of a nice thing. And then the host club has to keep the records, file the annual financial reports, unless you have some arrangement like Doug talked about where you're the ones paying the invoices. Make sure they save the invoices. The, the, you know, Rotary is different. I, I do a lot of grants in my in my um, my work life, and um, Rotary is a little bit different. Like they'll give you the money before you start the project, as opposed to giving you money on a reimbursement basis. That is gold. That is fantastic. But in the end, you will get into problems at being a club in good standing if you if your host club does not save the receipts and file the final report. So. You know, do yourself a favor and make sure that the host club saves the receipts ahead of time and files progress reports. In a typical situation, we are the international club. And so we are responsible for calling them and saying, hey, how's the project going? Are you saving the receipts? Where's a project 
there's a progress report due and I will send out reminders to people. And I think you'll even get automatically reminders. If you're are, are the international sponsor and says, Hey, you know, you guys need to file your, your progress report, but really it's that final report. That's the most important that you need to be sure to file. And, um, that I'll keep nagging you about until it gets done. Debbie, can I ask Doug a question? Um, Doug, where, where you were paying the vendors directly in your African project, did you have any trouble getting receipts from those vendors? Not at all. Um, uh, and we, we started off by making sure that we had uh, correctly printed invoices. Um, as an example, the first invoice we got was a real loosey-goosey handwritten thing. We said, no, this is not an invoice. It's a parts, <laughs> list. It's a parts list. And uh, so, you know, we, we were able to, uh, to establish that kind of thing in advance. Um, we also were lucky. The uh, president of the company, which although it's a company based in Tanzania, the president is an American who is based in, in the U.S., so. Uh, he and I had had lots of conversation ahead of time, designing and uh, planning and scheduling and all of that. So, no, but you can, you can have difficulty. And, and so uh, you need to lay out your needs and requirements ahead of time, let them know it's non-negotiable and that they won't receive their money and unless, you know, or the final amount of their money, unless you have that. Well, that, yeah, that's that's good information because I, I think not only Africa, but certainly in Latin America, getting invoices and receipts can be tricky. I mean, absolutely. Yeah. And they'll add, I found on our Africa project, there was a little adjunct piece that we added on and I let it go because everything worked out. But I know they wrote the invoice after the fact of the money delivery. So they made the invoice match the money delivery. Well, and I wouldn't get so, uh, it certainly is something that happens here too. <laughs> because we're working with nonprofits and Rotarians who are all volunteers and, and uh, yeah. <laughs> so um, you just want to think about it. This is my money. This is Rotarian's money, and how can we be good stewards? And of course, we want to make sure Rot Rotary International maintains, you know, its five-star review um, in terms of, of um, uh, the the ratings on uh, whatever that charitable organization. Talk of. Oh, and Mark, um, also with respect to that, uh, Debbie's talking about getting the final report and all of that. Uh, in aid of that, since the club wasn't all that uh, proficient at it over there, we did it jointly. We we basically emailed it back and forth until you know until it uh, kind of looked right to everybody. So basically, we were helping teach them, um, putting in what we knew, and then telling them what we needed them to put in, and uh, worked out pretty good. So what I'm sharing with you here is the grants.rotary.org homepage. And you'll see all the grant uh, uh, resources here on this side. So there's the MOU, there's the community assessments form in case you need some help, the grant application template, the global grant calculator, which I guess they're gonna have to change, but I use that all the time. And I recommend that you use it too. And I, I have the link to it in, in the form. Um, there is the um, Guide to Global Grants, which I sent to everybody, and those are the key things that I've got. Oh, the training plan, which they always want you to fill out, so you're going to need to do that. And then I haven't talked about some specialized cases, which are vocational training teams and scholarships, that if you're interested in doing a grant like that, then we'll need to chat separately about it. So if you do grants.rotary.org and you do your login, then if you go to my grants, I am uh, super special and I get to see all the grants that are in progress. Okay, so what do we have here? We have an overview of all the Rotary grants that are in the district. This is super exciting. Okay, so we have the Agua Para Todos. We have the uh, Equipos de Gereos de Comunidad Sem Pata and an entrepreneurial project that I'm convinced they have the wrong district listed on. 
<laughs> and we have the authorization required for the Mattel grant, which we are waiting for one district in India to authorize, and I know that will happen. We have your Nietzsche Clean Water, which um, I hope you can get authorized ASAP, because then it'll be submitted. And then we have the free moon catcher kits, which is a project run by another district and club, but it's related to education and, and uh, supplies for um, menstrual cycles for women. We have your dry composting toilets, yay, San Miguel phase two, that it's already submitted. Um, Guatemalan Women in Poverty, which is a grant that others are participating in, um, but not a lead. Okay, a Bolivia grant that East Fresno was involved in. It's a COVID-19 grant and it's been submitted, so that's great. Um, and then the Syrian Refugee Project, which um, I need to get an update from Ilga on. And then all the approved grants are down here and um, you see, so there's our district grant, some hygiene and sanitation, a couple of older projects that I think are mostly done. Your Haiti project um, that I think, um, be interested to know what's going on. And then again, um, Safe Waters in School, a couple of um, uh, projects in India, uh, the Empower Through Play, that's a project, actually I didn't mention that, that's a project with the Kinship Center in uh, Monterey County. And um, then these other grants that I think are um, moving right along, the Razalog project was uh, hospital development that they were very, very close to doing. They were gonna do it in April and I was gonna try to go visit when I was in Europe in April, but everything stopped, so I'm not sure that that happened. So De Debbie, you mentioned the Kinship Center there in Salinas. I'm a little bit familiar with them. So they, they, they actually were the recipient of a, of a global grant? So, um, well, again, it's always the Rotary Club that's the recipient of the grant, but they coordinated with uh, Brian Mansour with the Rotary Club of Santa Lucia. And, uh, da, 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 and they coordinated with a Turkish um, club and so, uh, 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 children raise, okay, okay, okay. I know they coordinated with, uh, 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 Empower Through Play initiative has potential to impact 2,500 kids. Families are referred through mental health services at the Kinship Center. Wow. So again, the money always goes to the Rotary Club um, not, but the Kinship Center helped with referrals to the program and probably helped to implement the program. So, very cool. Very cool. So this is what the grants um, item looks like. Okay, so um, we'll work to get all of these grants author submitted, authorized, and, or authorized and submitted so that everything is in here uh, in that category by July 1. Yeah, the ones in the authorization required uh, don't have to meet the July. Uh, um, yeah, they don't have to meet the July one. They're okay. I'm going to double check on that, but you said you did already, but yeah. I just want to make sure. I, I um, read it three times because I, I was really. Okay, okay, good. I trust you, Doug, because you could teach this class. So, okay, thank you. That's really helpful because. As long Sometimes as it takes as a while to get all the authorizations because you think, wait a minute, like with the Zimbabwe grant, oh my goodness, it took forever and we had to redo some things in that and now we have to get some more reauthorizations. And in Zimbabwe, they have had persistent um, electrical outages. And so something as basic as getting online and the internet sometimes takes a while. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to stop screen sharing and uh, come back to the team here and ask for um, people who want to talk a little bit about their global grant. And Brenda, I'm going to turn over to you. What can we do to help you with your global grant? Oh, Brenda, you are muted. As you were mentioning, um, Debbie, uh, we have certain uh, amount of money that we, we are not yet dead with the full amount of money that we need. So I believe if some of the clubs will be able to help us out to finalize the 4,000 4, is what we need, uh, that would be great. That way we can submit and be uh, ready to to help these people that is in need of clear water, 
there um, we're gonna help 5,000 5, individuals, more or less 800 families. So these people is people that even the children, they are the ones um, handling in pots water. So, and who knows how many miles to get a pot of water. So we just go down, in my case, I go down to get some water. These people is walking long distance to get a, a little bit of water. So if we can, uh, if in your clothes, there is a little bit of help for our club and for these people, for my country, we will really appreciate it because they need it. Brenda, what exactly does the project do? They are going to, um, what they are doing is that in the past, they have a international help, but they, um, they need 75% more that they did before with this help. Um, and they are going to uh, do a well. They need to um, get the well and the connections for, the, uh, for all the, the different houses. That way they can get the water and uh, connect the water to the, through this well. There is an existing one, but they are getting, um, they are going to, to, um, to revise really well this one. So um, these people, they have a, already an engineer company that they are gonna help and the, um, the um, municipality of Santa Tecla is the one that is helping uh, to, this, um, to this town with uh, already some uh, support um, and um, what else I can say? Um, so we're almost ready to go, Brenda. We just are working to get some club money and then working with them locally to get that memorandum of understanding from the city, right? Yes. Uh -huh. yes. Fantastic. All right. Um, Doug, tell us about your, uh, I call it joking, your, your, your ninja water project. Um, how is that moving along? It's a Swahili word. You can't pronounce it. Uh, it's Nietzsche. Nietzsche? No, nice Nietzsche. try. Nice try. Uh -huh. Njicha. Njicha. Oh my gosh. Okay, yeah. you're right. Uh, it's a suburb of a, a small city, large town in uh, Tanzania. Uh, very near the uh, edge of the largest lake in uh, Africa, Lake Victoria. 6,000 people. They have one, some church group came through and drilled a well for them and put in a hand pump and left town. So they have one hand pump to serve 6,000 people, uh, which is about 1,500 families. Uh, they figure about 10 minutes per five gallon bucket, which is what serves a family for a day. Wow. At that rate, they can, fit, they can fill 75 buckets during the day. Uh, people line up all night to fill up more buckets, but the majority of people search all night to find ruts in the road with dirty water. Uh, other places with dirty water. And of course, they're filled with bacteria, parasites, and uh, viruses of every sort. So people sick a lot. Uh, the project will consist of a number of components. Uh, first, of course, is a well, and uh, expect to go to about 200 feet for that, um, and produce clean water. Uh, it won't need to be treated. The The pump for the well is a submersible pump. It'll sit down inside the well in the water and it'll be powered by solar panels. Crucial because the, the electric supply in Tanzania is intermittent and very expensive. Mm. Yeah. They, they have hybrid, hybrid pumps that use uh, diesel when the electric goes out and that costs about 10 times what it costs here. So on their economy, they couldn't afford it. So by putting in solar, we've prepaid their energy for the next 25, 30 years. The water gets pumped into elevated tanks, 50,000 liters, which is uh, 12,500 gallons roughly, uh, into tanks 15 feet above the ground. That produces gravity. And coming from those like spokes of a wheel will be 10 pipes 
um, each serving two faucets. So a total of 20 faucets. Now we've got 20 places for people to come and fill their buckets. And we've done the math, it'll, it'll serve all 6,000 people. Um, the town has a very experienced, long-standing microfinance group run by women, which means it's um, well yeah. run and uh, trustworthy. Um, they have agreed to take on the financial management. The town people have made several commitments. One is they've come up with an agreed on monthly price for water. There's a reason why their free water is costing them. That is that it goes into that account in the microfinance group into a dedicated account. And then when there's maintenance needed on the well, they have the money to fix it. They are looking forward to sometime down the line, maybe even having enough in that account to uh, do a similar water system in the neighboring uh, community. So um, then their management is going to be done by a committee which has been chosen uh, includes um, a city leader, uh, one of the sort of community leaders, well-respected uh, wife of a, a pastor there, uh, a couple of other people, and a uh, and two Rotarians. They will solve all of the uh, dispute issues or or management issues. So that's uh, in a nutshell. That's the the project. We uh, our partner club got a little ambitious and they signed up for three global grants and their district said, no, nah, you're too small. You can only do one at a time. So <laughs> we're waiting for them to finish their first one. And we've got all our approvals except their district management. As soon as that um, first project is done, which looks like August, unless COVID interferes, um, their management has assured me they will sign immediately. You're on mute, Debbie. On mute. I know a lot of different clubs have participated in that, so thank you all for joining in. Um, yeah, Mark, quite, a few, to... quite a few here, but also we have uh, four, no, five, including the, the Tanzanian club, we have five districts represented in our uh, project, one in uh, Canada. And that'll be even more important when there are the new funding requirements. So, Mark, I was just going to ask you to talk a little bit about your project because I, I know that you'll be coming forward probably with a new phase of that, even though the current phase has been submitted. Yeah, sure. So, a little bit of the history of the project. Uh, the club down in um, San Miguel de Ende for the past several years has been building freshwater cisterns. They've built over 1,200 of them for families out in the Campo. If you go down to San Miguel de Allende, it's one of the most beautiful cities in the world. But once you get outside the city itself in the, what they call the Campo, the countryside, you're, you're really in, in, in a very destitute place. So families there uh, ha had a situation very much like what Doug described in Zimbabwe. They didn't have clean water. And what they did have in the way of wells was, was water that, the wells were so deep that it was basically, uh, un undrinkable, unhealthy water just because they were so deep. Now, when Rotary stepped in and started building these cisterns, they uh, partnered with a local organization called Sedesa to actually build and train people how to use the cisterns and maintain them. Uh, and what they started to hear from the women in the villages, because all the men had left and gone back to this, gone up north to the States to work, the women said, well, you know, it, it's great we have healthy water to drink, but we really want toilets. We have no toilets. So the club down there started a small project, a pilot project. They built uh, 30 dry compost toilets, which are basically, they're, they're, think of it as a cement outhouse where uh, the toilet itself is, is uh, it's dry compost. There's no water involved. And uh, the families that came forward to request these toilets had to go through training, which they were happy to do on how to, um, you know, use and maintain the toilets. But the compost itself, the human waste that turns into compost, is then used as fertilizer. And if I showed you the before and after pictures of crops that they grow there, uh, once they were able to use this, this compost fertilizer, it's amazing. It's really amazing. So not only do they have 
better hygiene, they have privacy, they have safety, the women have safety now, uh, they actually have outstanding fertilizer to use on the crop. So such a success that the second phase of the project was for 150 toilets, uh, that's 150 families that will get them. And that has become fully funded thanks to our district. Uh, now they have a total of, there were 200 families that, that signed up requesting toilets. So there, I anticipate they'll come along looking for another 50 uh, at some point, but, but they're, they're, they've gone, they have two, 200 total families that have formally signed up requesting a toilet and, and saying that they'll go through training if they can get one. Get one. Um, but uh, I, I don't know when that follow-on grant will come. Well, that's fantastic, Mark. Um, so we are at our adjournment time. Anna, I don't know if you want to report on the Mattel grant briefly, um, but what I wanted to let everybody know is that about every four weeks, we've been having a global grant sharing team. And I'm looking at my calendar ahead and thinking that um, unless everybody's going away on uh, 4th of July events, I'll probably have it on the 29th at about the same time, six o'clock, but uh, it doesn't go quite as long because it's not a training session. So um, I, I wanna release you all to go to dinner, but any final comments or something that you've been waiting to say for the good of the order? All right, so North Fresno, we look forward to hearing about your grant next time around. And um, we hope to have the other grants then submitted, the Matau Vocational Grant um, and the, uh, the uh, El Salvador Grant. And we hope to have the club ready to go in, uh, in Nietzsche, Zimbabwe. I promised you all that I would send you the template application, the global grant checklist, the club commitment form, and the Rotary Grant Advisor list. Is there anything else that you all would like to get? Okay. Thank you very, thank you very much, Thank Debbie. you so much, Debbie. Thank you, Debbie. Thank, you, Debbie. thank you for your participation. Great info. I'm gonna log off the call, battery running. Oh yeah, I know how that goes. Is there a minimum the international partner must contribute? No, it is really just the percentage. It still works out to about 10,000. All right. Thank you all. Happy Monday. And Happy Monday. Um, yeah. go forth and do good in the world. <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.